Michael, and I'm at Corey Rawson High School, ready to talk Hornet football with the newest head coach of Corey Rawson, Corey Hefner. How you doing, Corey? Thanks for letting us come out. I'm doing great, thank you. First year with the program, how are things going, getting everyone acclimated to your system? Uh, it's going very well, uh, moving along very quickly. Um, the players are used to learning new systems, so they've picked up uh, both offense and defense very easily. And uh, I think we're at a great spot where we're at right now. Yeah, these guys have had a couple of different coaches throughout their high school career. How do you think that affects them and it, they like they must be adaptable? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's tough for them and uh, I understand uh, it's, it's a little bit of a learning curve for them. Um, like I said, they're experienced with that, unfortunately for them, but uh, very coachable and uh, very eager to, to get right in and, and uh, learn a new system. Well, last year they went on a nice little winning streak, uh, weeks five through seven, three games in a row. and finished the year three and seven. What have you seen from the guys returning and are you looking for them to take step up and take more of a, on a leadership role? Uh, absolutely, and it's uh, been pretty clear so far. Um, like I said, uh, new coaches, it doesn't matter, it's still their team. And then uh, they're, they've taken control of that and they're ready to build on what, what they've done last year and uh, move in, in, the, in the right direction. How has your previous coaching experience prepared you for this head coaching job here at Corey Ross? Uh, I was a uh, Fortunate enough to be a part of a successful program. Uh, I've gone to the playoffs a few years in a row, um, and so you know, I've learned learned from those experiences. Uh, and uh, probably the most important thing I've learned is you know getting the coach to, to stick around, uh, some consi consistency from the coaches, uh, and that really trickles down to um, to the players and doing things the right way and getting things done. And coached at Paint Valley and defensive-minded coach. Is that correct? That's correct. So how how are you going to bring that here? Uh, I, I love to hit. I love my players to hit and be aggressive. Um, so I want to relate that, you know, to the field. And uh, it's they're they're so eager to hit right now. It's it's really hard to contain them. So I, I know it, it's going to be an easy job for me to get them to be physical. Right. Do you have to hold them back with the new OHSA guidelines about hitting, and and is that affecting your practices a little bit? Uh, absolutely. Uh, like I said, they're they're eager to get going. Uh, it's hard for them to understand sometimes that you know that with the new regulations and the acclimation period that we kind of got to hold off and and w uh, get our days in uh, before we're ready to hit. So so it's coming up very soon. So yeah. we're ready. You'll be able to hit very shortly, week yep. one. For you, you're a math teacher in the school as well. How's important? How important is it to you to get involved with the community and also to see your football players in the classroom? Uh, it's a huge advantage for me. That like I said. Uh, being in the community, being in the school building, uh, being able to keep an eye on them, yeah. also being available to them if they need something, they can come to me. And uh, so it's a huge advantage. We got a couple other uh, coaches on staff that are teachers in the building too, so uh, a lot of familiar faces for them. So it'll, it'll be a good year being able to to really uh, connect with them and, and be available for them. Yeah, it'd be the start of something really good here at Corey Rawson. What's your coaching staff looking like? Who we got on there? Uh, offensive coordinator is uh, Jason Diller. Uh, he's a teacher here as well in the high school. Uh, also have uh, Tad Geis, um, Josh McFarlane, and Kyle Wagner. He's also a new hire here this year at the school. So some new faces, some old? Uh, yeah, they've all uh, been been involved in the program at some point, uh, whether they're coaching different sports or uh, graduated from here also. So a lot of uh, dedication and a lot of commitment already built in, which is great, great for the program. Yeah, without a doubt. On the field, offensively, what can we expect from Corey Rawson this season? Uh, I believe we have a very gifted backfield. Um, run a little bit of the, strip, the spread. Uh, we only lost a few last year. Um, they, were, they were major parts of, of mm -hmm. both offense and defense, but I think it would be really, uh, really easy to fill those holes from last year. Um, like I said, we have a gifted backfield that will really be able to uh, make some good plays for us this year. What about defensively? That's your forte, so what can we expect? Uh, I, like I said, they're eager to hit, and I hope that continues throughout the season, um, being aggressive and uh, really making an impact on the, for the team here. Has there been any surprises for you so far early on into, into camp uh, in terms of guys stepping up that maybe you didn't see? or I mean, Everyone's kind of new to you, I guess, at this point. So has anybody or anything surprised you? Uh, I've watched film from last year, so you know I, I've I know of the players. You know I don't don't know them yet. I've um, been getting getting to know them, uh, starting to build some good relationships here. Um, the biggest surprise for me is their work ethic and how hard they're working. They're ready to, to really get after it. Like I said, it's it's hard holding them back right now, but uh, they're ready to go. Well, a chance for them to get after it is a scrimmage coming up against Harden Northern. Also have a scrimmage 
scheduled against Waynesfield. Goshen, what are you hoping to get out of those scrimmages? And like you said, I know those guys are eager. Right. But for you, that's an important learning process and period as well, right? Right. I just, I'm eager to get them going against a different competition uh, other than each other. Uh, it would be really good for them. The seven on sevens are great, but like I said, no contact and things like that. But it's good for us to, to learn some new things. But uh, the scrimmages are ready to see really how physical they're going to be and uh, hopefully um, they'll be pleasantly surprised with them. So, And then week one at Bluffton, followed by a home game against USV. Those will be two pretty challenging non-conference games for you guys. You like the way your schedule is laid out? Yeah, we, we need to be ready right away. Bluffton's always a, a big game for us. Um, so I, the, the players are always excited about that. And USV, I think they won't, they know pretty well that that's going to be a great game. Uh, yeah, we need those those two games early on to put us in the right direction. And then you get into the Blanchard Valley Conference, and it's, it's a talented conference that continues to get better year in and year out. What do you know about the conference? Coming, obviously, this is your first year. And what do you think will make it good for your players to play in this conference? Being new to, to this conference, didn't know a whole lot, but like I said, the community's helped me out. Uh, the players, uh, they know very well uh, the teams to beat and uh, the, the teams to, that are going to be tough for us. Uh, it's a really, really good conference, though, from what I understand and what I've seen, uh, and it will really help us prepare uh, if you know as we go through the season for, each other, for different teams. With a lot of good seniors in this conference as well, how have your seniors come together and it could even have started before camp, I'm assuming it did, to kind of become a unit? Yeah, um, like I said, we didn't lose many last year, so a lot of the seniors already have experience, so they have that going for them. Um, uh, they know what it takes to be to play on Friday nights. And uh, like I said, the, the ones that want to hit are, are the, the seniors. They're really ready to get things going. What do you want to have accomplished before week one? What's an area you'd like to improve on throughout the rest of training camp? Uh, like well, we're still learning uh, some offense and some of the defense. Uh, defense is uh, a little easier to learn. Uh, it's more uh, generic. Uh, the offense we're bringing is a uh, different terminology and things. Uh, it's all the all the same plays. You know, we're not creating any new plays, anything like that. But um, even this pa the past few days, the the way they've been able to pick up the plays as we've been going through offensively uh, has been very very surprising. So I like to just uh, perfect those things uh, and and kind of move the right way with that. Well, best of luck. Thanks for letting us come out to chat with you. We're looking forward to watching Corey Rawson take on Bluffton week one. It's time for a break here on the warm-up. When we come back, Mark Kuntz will sit down with some of the Hornet players. Welcome back to the warm-up. I'm Mark Kuntz. As we continue talking, Corey Ross and fighting Hornet football, joined now by a pair of seniors on this year's team, Jaden Hall and Skylar Arnett. And Jaden, let's uh, start off with, obviously, it's a new head coach for you guys, but that's the third head coach in three years. How do you prepare when you have a new guy coming in every year? I know Coach is talking about the importance of, of putting in his roots and, and staying here and, and getting something established. As a player, is it difficult to buy into that? Uh, not really, you know, it's kind of easy. I'm kind of used to it by now. Skyler, what, uh, what has Coach brought to the table that's maybe a little bit different than what Corey Rawson has had the last couple of years? Um, I think he brought us closer together, you know. We were, we've had three coaches in the past three years, you know, and so uh, it's kind of hard for us to come together because we're always going off in different things because they're different coaches, you know. And um, I think he just really brought us together, like kind of like this big family. Instead of like, you know, just being teammates, we're a big family, you know, like, just like that. And this family last year took a lot of lumps, but it's a very young family. Right. A lot of returnees who played last year. Is that going to pay off this year now? Absolutely. Um, we only lost, you know, three seniors last year. So um, us juniors last year, well, seniors now, we really had to step up last year, you know, because we wanted to take charge and we wanted to do good this year coming up. And uh, with, uh, you know, our head coach leaving last year, well, this year it was kind of tough. So I'm happy. Hefner came in and took charge, and I'm excited for the season. Jaden, a nice little three-game winning streak in the middle of last season. That give you a little bit of momentum going into the offseason, going into this year now? Yeah, it makes me more excited for this season to start. You guys open up as you normally do against Bluffton. What's that rivalry like? I used to go there fifth grade, and I just want to beat them. I don't, I don't really like them that much. My best friend's on the football team there. 
he always talks smack, and I'm just going to run him over this year. <laughs> Skyler, speaking of running over, end of practice today. You guys had a little obstacle course, had to run over some things. Was that a, was that a fun way to kind of put a bow on the this first week of two-a-days? Oh, yeah, it was a fun little bit of competition to do, you know, instead of just sitting there running through plays and running through defense and offense, you know, and doing gassers and stuff like that. It's more fun to do a little competition, you know, see who's faster against, like, you know, seniors and juniors against freshmen and sophomores and or just going around different stuff like that. I mean, it's a good time. All right, Skylar Arnett, Jaden Hall. Before we go, Jaden, you've got a special message for someone? Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. I love you. I miss you. I'll see you in, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, more from Corey Rawson here in WOS. Welcome back to the warm-up as we continue at Corey Ross in high school. Joined now by two more seniors on this Fighting Hornet team, Bryce Tuttle and Zach Ream. And Bryce, you're wearing the money socks. Is this year going to be all good, All nothing but Benjamins for the Fighting Hornets this year? Yes, sir. <laughs> as you look at new head coach uh, Corey Hafner, he comes in with a defensive background, had some success at Paint Valley, a, a small school that has had success. He knows how to work with small schools. What have you seen defensively from Coach Hafner? Uh, this year it's a lot more simple than last year. Uh, I think we're flying around a lot better, and everybody's just working more as a team. Zach, new year, new head coach. It's kind of been the theme for Corey Ross in your entire high school career. What, what's the differences that you've seen with this new coaching staff? Uh, well, uh, first of all, they, they work us really hard, and they get after us, and they bring us back up. They always tell us what we do good, and they let us know what we do wrong and how to improve on that. And they just, they kind of bring a new atmosphere to the game. Zach, what do you think the strength of this year's team is going to be? I think us all working together and cooperating really well this year. And we're not bickering at each other all the time. We're actually working each other more than working for ourselves or working for the team. Bryce, you look back at last year, three and seven, had a nice little winning streak in the middle of that year. What did you learn from last year that's going to help you this year? Well, the three-game winning streak really got us on a roll. We were all excited to win. I think we need to start like that this year, beat Bluffton, and really get on a roll and don't stop. Bluffton and Upper Scioto Valley, the two non-conference games this year. Are those two opponents that prepare you well for the BBC? Yes, they will. Good competition. Zach, looking at the BBC this year, a lot of talent coming back. A very strong season last year from the conference as a whole. Where do you see Corey Rawson kind of fitting into the BBC this year? Uh, I think if we really push ourselves, we can be very successful, maybe take it all the way to the top. All right, that's going to do it for us tonight on the warm-up. So we want to thank all of our guests from Corey Rawson High School. For Matt Finkel and Amber Chambers, I'm Mark Coons. We'll see you next time on WOSN.